Question. What do you think about alien life? Do you believe that NASA is telling us the truth that out of millions of planets they have discovered that none of them are habitable, they either are too cold or hot to support life? Is it true and we are, that we are most likely alone? What is your opinion about Greeks and the Dogon tribe that have accurately, accurate knowledge about the Sirius star? They have information that simply wasn't possible to have without strong telescopes. Where did they get this information, in your opinion? Well, <clears throat> I have touched on this topic before. Uh, the Ascended Masters have made it very clear that the purpose of the world of form is the growth in consciousness. And I explained that in my video about how the world was created, how the, it was actually created in layers. And I explained that we are part of what I call an unascended sphere. And in our sphere, according to the Ascended Masters, there are billions and billions of self-aware beings that are all growing in consciousness, or in some cases, like planet Earth, many people are not right now growing, but they have the potential to grow. So according to the Masters, there are millions, if not billions, of planets that have intelligent life. So I'm, of course, perfectly uh, accepting that. Uh, but there, there are a couple of things we, we have to consider here. First of all, I mean, the question is asking, uh, do you believe that NASA is telling us the truth, that out of millions of planets they have discovered that none of them are habitable? They either are too cold or too hot to support life. Well, what kind of life are you talking about? Because um, it could potentially be true that NASA hasn't discovered any habited, inhabited planets with the paradigm they are using, which is the materialistic paradigm. So it may well be the case. I obviously am not a, a NASA engineer, so I don't know. But uh, what I will say is that um, my understanding is that inhabited planets are quite far from each other so that there's very little potential for actual physical travel from one planet to another. And this is to give uh, a planet the freedom to evolve or devolve on its own without any interference in the physical. So this is one thing. But the other thing is that uh, what kind of life forms? Uh, we are a carbon-based life form. But there are many other life forms that are not carbon-based and therefore don't have the same limitations in terms of temperature and this and that. See, one of the problems that we have as human beings is that we always tend to look at everything from our perspective, from our vantage point. You go back just a few hundred years, they thought the Earth is the center of the universe. It's a flat disk, there's a dome around it, and the stars and the sun are just on moving on the inside of that dome, if you travel beyond the dome, there's God and the angels. So they were extremely self-centered and self-focused. I mean, this little speck of dust is the center of the universe. Uh, so <clears throat> now we are thinking that life can only be similar to ours. But why should it be? It's, it's a matter of, you know, when I say that the purpose of the world of form is the evolution of consciousness, a consciousness can evolve in many ways. It doesn't have to be the kind of physical bodies that we have. As I also explain in, my, uh, in many of my videos, including my one about how the world was created, uh, there are four levels of the material universe, the purely physical, the emotional, mental identity levels. And there are beings in all levels. So there are planets where there is life, but it's not in the physical realm. Like, for example, Venus in our solar system has life on, in the higher levels. Uh, so it's possible that there are beings who live on these planets that don't have physical life, but they, their souls or life streams can come to Earth and incarnate here in physical bodies. And that's what, to me, explains this, what, you're, uh, what the question is talking about. The Greeks and the Dogon tribe, they have knowledge about Sirius. Well, uh, I don't think they need a telescope to do this. That would have to be 
such a powerful telescope there that we probably couldn't yeah, maybe we can build it today, but there's certainly the Greeks and the Dogon tribe, they couldn't build a telescope like that. So, in my understanding, it's because there were people there who incarnated and came from the God Star Sirius. And they have some memory of this. And maybe they even have some intuitive contact with the beings who live on the God Star Sirius. So, to me, this makes perfect sense, you know, and, and this explains many of the things that uh, you can see. Many spiritual people feel like they are star seeds, or they have come from a certain planet, or and this is because, as I explained in, in my avatar psychology videos, that many of us came from natural planets and volunteered to embody on Earth, and we can still have some memory, some connection to those planets. But this isn't, of course, what we today call alien life, because uh, you have to realize NASA and science, they are trapped in a materialistic paradigm. So when they are talking about alien life, they can only talk about something physical. But to me, uh, most of the alien life is non-physical. Well, they're not even in what we call the physical realm. But this doesn't mean that they can't come here and incarnate, and many of us have come from other planets. So. Uh, this this is my take on it. Um, it's also my understanding from the Ascended Masters that a planet is allowed to evolve on its own. That there's a law that you can't have a civilization that physically travels here in spaceships to either steal our resources, as in the old movie Independence Day, or to save us uh, from ourselves. Because uh, free will is free will, and if the inhabitants of the, of the Earth uh, want to destroy the planet, they are allowed to do so in order to have that experience, which can be so dramatic that some people actually wake up from it and realize the insanity of the duality consciousness. But anyway, um, there are, of course, many other ways to realize the insanity of the duality consciousness on Earth, as I talk about in many of my videos. But anyway, uh, I am perfectly open to the existence of many, many planets that have even physical life, even carbon-based life, many planets that have non-carbon-based life forms in the physical, but many more planets that have uh, risen to such a higher level, the collective consciousness of the planets have been risen, uh, raised to a higher level, where they no longer have physical bodies. They exist in the emotional mental identity realm. This is part of what I explained in my video about how the world was created, that our whole sphere is ascending and uh, everything, there is an upward momentum that's pulling up on everything, but that was created because some beings went ahead of others, raised their consciousness, and some planets have raised their consciousness, so there, for example, is only life in the identity realm. Uh, and uh, some planets have even started ascending to the spiritual realm. So there are many complex scenarios when you go into this.